This is the course Mechanical Vibrations. In this presentation, we will study the harmonically excited system. My name is Carmen Mueller Carger, and this is chapter number three from our textbook, Rao. In this chapter, we will study the solution of the governing equation subjected to harmonic equations, which means that the solution is the homogeneous part plus the particular solution. The homogeneous part represents the solution to free vibrations. And we already have studied that. And now we will study the particular solution, which has the same form as the external force. So if we have a harmonic force, our solution will be also harmonic. And the frequency of the response will be equal to the frequency of excitation. We will study the phenomenon of resonance by analyzing the magnification or amplification factor. The learning objectives of these chapters are find the responses of an undamped and an viscously damped single degree of freedom system subjected to different type of harmonic force, including base excitation, and rotating unbalance. We will distinguish between transient, steady state, and total solution. We will understand the variation of magnification factor and phase angle with the frequency of excitation and the phenomena of resonance and beats. We will study the response of damped system for harmonic force, harmonic motion of the base and the rotating balance and the force transmitted to the base in each of those cases. And we will identify cells excited from them and investigate their instability aspects. Here we have a viscously damped system where we have a mass with a spring and a damper. A mechanical or structural system is said to undergo forces vibrations whenever external energy is supplied to the system. We have an external load applied, and in this case you see in our system it is force right here. The applied forces or displacement excitation may be harmonic, non-harmonic, but periodic, non-periodic or random in nature. The non-periodic excitation may have long or short duration. The response of a dynamic system to suddenly applying non-periodic excitation is called a transient response. When we apply a harmonic or a non-harmonic but periodic excitation, that will produce a steady state response as long as the excitation is applied. And we will study the difference between transient response and steady state response. The response of a system of a harmonic excitation is also harmonic and with the same frequency of excitation. The vibration produced for an unbalanced rotating machine, for example, this airplane turbine, this unbalance, it may produce a vibration in the wind, the oscillation of a bridge or at this tall tower due to steady winds, or the vertical motion of an automobile by a sinusoidal road surface are examples of harmonically excited vibrations. The question of motion of a system that has an external force is very similar to the previous one that we analyzed before. However, we now have a term in the right side of the equation. Before, we had a zero here, so the equation of motion was what is called homogeneous. Right now, we have that the equation of motion is the mass time acceleration, the force of the damper, the force of the spring, equals to the external force applied. Remember that x is measured from the static equilibrium position. This is important because otherwise we will have the weight as an external force as well. The solution of this type of equation is the homogeneous solution and the particular solution. The particular solution is the solution regarding the external force that is applied and the shape of this particular solution will be this one right here being a a constant then we have f the same function then we have another constant b 
multiply by f prime, which is the derivative of this function, and so on. So we have the first derivative, the second derivative, and so forth, until those two derivatives are equal. So if I have, for example, in a harmonic external force, if we have cosine, the derivative will be negative sine. And the derivative of this sine will be the cosine. So the cosine will be the same as this one with a negative sign, but the negative sign will be absorbed by the constant. So we will have only two terms. In the case of the homogeneous solution, well, represent the free vibration of the system that we have already studied, and dies if we have any type of damping. Remember that we have the damping will be represented by the damping ratio. If it's zero, we have no damping, and this is the solution. If we have zeta less than one, we have an under damping system. We have zeta equals one, we have a critically damped system, and we have zeta greater than one, we have an over damped system. Let's now understand what is the difference between transient and steady state solution. If damping is present, it can be seen that the homogeneous solutions die out and this total solution becomes only the particular solution. You remember that if we have, for example, a under damped system, that's how the response looks like. That part of the motion will die and that's what is called transient. So if we plug in now the particular solution, for example, a cosine wave, then if we add those two solutions, we will have at the beginning the particular solution plus the homogeneous solution but after some time, the solution becomes only the steady state response. Of course, you all maybe have new cars and you don't notice that, but all cars, when you turn them on, you feel like a little bit of vibration and then you get the steady state motion of the car. That's what is called transient response and that's what is called steady state response. Most of the machines work under steady state. And most of the analysis that we will do is in the steady state unless we are working in resonance. So the very beginning of the motion will be very important because you have to turn the machine off right away. Before we go to harmonic external forces, let's do the analysis for a constant force. For example, Ft equals to F sub zero. If we apply the rule that the particular solution will be equals to a times the force plus b times the derivative of the force plus c and so on we get that the derivative of a constant is zero and second derivative two so we get only the first term so the particular solution will have the form a times s zero and a becomes one over k therefore our particular solution will be f sub zero over k the total solution then will be the particular solution plus the homogeneous solution, the particular solution being F0 over K, and the homogeneous solution, you remember, for example, for undamped system, this is the solution. Now, important is that this constant C1 and C2, we have to get them not only for the homogeneous solution only, but for the total solution. So now with x being the initial displacement and x dot at zero being the initial velocity, then we plug that into the total solution and we get C1 and we get C2. As, as you see, C1 and C2 also are function of the external force. If you graph this expression, it looks something like that where we have the transient response and we have the steady state. And as you see, the homogeneous response that we had here is just shifted up because we have a constant force. So this constant force do not contribute to the vibrating motion. It's just shift the solution, F0 over K, which 
The static deflation of the spring, we study it when we had only the weight. But if we now, in not only the weight, but we have a constant force, the deflection of the spring will be also done by that constant force. Next, I will study the response for a harmonically excited UNDAM system. So I will do that in a separate presentation. And then we will study the harmonically excited damped systems.